Welcome, I'm Ijoma Onyato. Tonight, some good news for the business community as the acting president, Yemi Oshibajo, signs three executive orders that will ease business in Nigeria. Nigeria and Morocco sign a historic agreement on a gas pipeline construction linking West African countries to North Africa and Europe. Transparency International accuses Nigerian military of massive fraud and contract inflation. Military dismisses accusation and speeding car slams into crowd in New York Times Square, killing one woman and injuring several people. On business news tonight, ICO Insurance PLC plans fresh capital to boost shareholders' returns. While on sports news, the Nigeria Football Federation confirms the Super Eagles will play two friendlies, one against Corsica and the other Togo, ahead of the 2019 AFCON qualifiers against South Africa. And from Abuja, a three-story building collapses in Lagos, 16 people rescued from the rubble. The acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, today signed three executive orders expected to change some of the ways of the government doing business and operations in the country. The executive orders stipulate sanctions and punitive measures that will be imposed where necessary. The bill will ensure the promotion of transparency and efficiency in the business environment designed to facilitate the ease of doing business in the country. And finally, it will ensure timely submission of annual budgetary estimates by all statutory and non-statutory agencies, including companies owned by the federal government. The acting president arrived for another meeting of the Presidential Committee on Ease of Doing Business to intimate heads of government parastatals of the government's resolution to make business transaction easier in the country. Professor Shibajo lamented that Nigeria is lagging behind in the World Bank's ease of doing business ranking at 169, noting that the government will ensure Nigeria returns among the first 100 countries with easy ways of doing business. We must incentivize our own farmers and uh, currently we're working with the Ministry of Agriculture, uh, Ministry of Finance, the Central Bank Governor and several others working together to put together an incentive regime for our farmers to ensure that our farmers are also able to compete. Whatever it is that other countries are doing to make their products cheaper, we will do the same things and we'll even do better than that. The acting president, however, urged the officials to cooperate with the government to ensure that bottlenecks that hinder smooth business transactions are removed. Every time that we create obstacles for doing business, we attack our prosperity as a nation, we also attack the future because the young people simply will not be able to find accommodation to do the sorts of things that they need to do after being educated. Advocating for the patronage of made in Nigeria goods and service as a way of driving down costs, the Minister of Trade and Investment noted that this will relaunch the economy as part of the government's economic growth and recovery plan. In the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council and the reforms that um, are being carried out to become institutionalized, we want it to become the way we do business, not just something that, um, that um, we are doing for a short term and then we'll stop. As the government approves the executive order on ease of doing business, stakeholders believe business transactions in the country may be improved in the nearest future. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. No I'd like to get some perspective on this development. I'm being joined by the spokesperson to the acting president, Mr. Laulu Akonde. He joins me from Abuja. Thanks for joining us on the News at 10. Thank you very much for having me. All right. Now, the acting president has signed these new executive orders. Just tell us a bit more about what this involves exactly. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, early this morning, the acting president uh, held an engagement, so, uh, some kind of uh, interactive engagement uh, with key government officials, uh, particularly uh, officials that we manage or that are managing uh, some of the agencies that deal with, uh, uh, with doing business in Nigeria. And he, he wanted to have that opportunity to discuss with them 
the implications of the uh, the three executive uh, orders that he was going to sign uh, later in the afternoon. And he made the point that uh, as Nigerians, uh, we have to start to think in a way that understands that government is meant to facilitate a business and not to be an obstacle to business. And, and, and so he wanted that opportunity uh, to, to have an interactive engagement, which he did uh, with, with, with top government officials, mostly of the agencies that are involved in this uh, in, 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 in business uh, environment. You will recall uh, that President uh, Muhammadu Buhari had, uh, late last year set up a presidential enabling uh, business environment council, and he did ask uh, uh, Professor Shibadio, the now acting president, to chair that council. And, and that council have been, uh, has been busy meeting every, every week, uh, every month in council, setting up a secretariat uh, that, uh, that does the job on a daily basis, trying to figure out, you know, what are the options that we can take, what are the actions that we can take uh, to make doing business in Nigeria easier. And they, 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 they came up with quite a number of, uh, of options. Now, what happened today is that the acting president uh, actually issued uh, the, some of the executive orders that we facilitate uh, ease of doing okay, business let me in just Nigeria ask you, uh, you, that will... Sorry to have to cut you there. Let me turn your attention to the implications of those executive orders. We do understand that there might be sanctions for those who don't comply. What sort of sanctions are we talking about? Well, basically, uh, it, it's not anything beyond what the extant rules uh, of, of civil service and public service, you know, uh, uh, or, or already in place. The emphasis uh, is, is that the time has come for us as, as, a, as a government to understand her role uh, in, in facilitating business. Like the acting president said today, uh, anytime you become an obstacle as a government official to uh, to, 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 to the thriving, uh, to, to business, not enabling business to thrive, you are actually uh, uh, attacking the, 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 the future of our economy. You are actually attacking the prosperity of the country because it is the businesses that we create uh, the, the, the prosperity, that we create the employment, that we engage uh, uh, the youth. So, so the, the focus is not on the, uh, the sanctions. Of course, those sanctions have already been there, but we are saying let us all come together and begin to perform. Like he said at the event, uh, the Nigerian Public Service has some of the best individuals. Uh, we have some of the best ideas of how to get things done. Uh, but now it's time for us to actually perform and make things happen so that indeed we can begin to live uh, 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 the great potentials that this country is well known for. All right, Mr. Laulu Akonde, thanks for sharing your thoughts and enlightening us more about those executive bills. Thanks a lot for joining us on the news at 10 tonight. I'm staying with doing business, and this time it's a bit of infrastructure as Nigeria and Morocco have signed an agreement to construct a major gas pipeline linking West African countries to North Africa and Europe. The project, which is estimated at $25 billion, will be funded by the two countries who also signed an agreement to improve fertilizer supply to farmers here in Nigeria. Nigeria's delegation at the palace of the King of Morocco waiting to seal two key agreements that would foster the relation between Nigeria and Morocco. Yeah. Majesty, may God glorify you. The monarch had facilitated the agreement during his last visit to Nigeria. This initiative would also promote regional economic integration as well as accelerate electrification and industrialization in our mining, petrochemical, light manufacturing, agro-processing, and fertilizer sectors. The first agreement is for the construction of a major gas pipeline, which is signed by the Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, Mr. Mikantibaru, and the Director General of the Moroccan Office for Hydrocarbons and Mining, Mrs. Amina Benkadra. It is expected to benefit over 300 million people on the African continent. The second agreement aims to explore and upgrade phosphate reserves in Nigeria to boost fertilizer production and distribution. How do we make it get to the farm gate of the farmer? 
This is the collaboration between Morocco and Nigeria. FEPSAN and OCP have discussed it. The logistics, the transportation. Transportation in the first phase of this project was challenged, but today we're reaching an agreement with OCP on how to solve the logistic problem. But throughout the other priority states in Nigeria, so that will be a massive uh, operation to revamp these plants in key states where demand for fertilizer is important. It will be recalled that late last year, King Mohammed of Morocco was in Nigeria to reinforce bilateral relations with Nigeria. These deals are the fruits of that meeting. Let's take a look at some legal matters now. The Federal High Court in Abuja today deferred hearing in a legal action instituted by Malabu Oil against the federal government on the ownership of the oil prospecting license 245, otherwise known as Malabu Oil, until July the 5th this year. The lawsuit was put off by Justice John Toho following the inability of the plaintiffs to serve court processes on one of the major defendants in the suit, Shell Oil Company. When the matter was mentioned, counsel to the plaintiffs, Mr. John Achimugu, apologized to the court that proceedings could not go on as scheduled because of his inability to serve some processes on the defendants before the sitting. And a federal high court sitting in Lagos has fixed May the 25th to rule on whether it has jurisdiction to hear the suit involving the chairman, Capital Oil and Gas Limited, Define Uba, and the Department of State Security. Justice Idris Mohammed adjourned the matter for ruling after hearing lawyers to the DSS and the NNPC make a case for the matter to be transferred to Abuja. Meanwhile, members of staff of Capital Oil who thronged the court today have urged the federal government to intervene and release their boss. They say the crisis has led to the shutdown of business operations and over 2,000 workers are currently on the verge of losing their jobs. Away from legal matters, attacks on several communities in Taraba states allegedly by herdsmen have left at least 11 people dead and many more injured. Some of the victims have been evacuated to the General Hospital in Bailey local government area, while those displaced by mayhem are also being camped. This next report looks at the situation there and the efforts to restore normalcy. This settlement at the Thief Council Hall looks every bit a temporary resting place. But those who have fled attacks in neighboring communities have nowhere else to go. Still in shock, residents, now displaced, try to carry on with activities necessary for survival. But the challenges abound, from hopelessness to overcrowding. Most of the children who have, who have been you know, displayed and are here in the camp with us, they don't have any medical uh, attention and most of them are sick, even now that I speak to you. Those people that are coming up here with the kettles full everywhere, you can't even plant anything, you can't even sit at peace in the town. These people that are coming, we, they should go and show them another place every time, Bali. A traditional leader of the houses in Bali assures journalists that he has been holding talks with the warring herdsmen and tea farmers. This thing usually happens between big tribes, the Fulani and other tribes. It is from these tribes we have this kind of crisis. That is why we invited their leaders for a discussion. We asked every one of them to be calm and not be aggressive. At a meeting with security agencies and other concerned parties in Jalingo, the state capital, the governor puts the unrest down to the drift of so many people into the state. When you see a huge number of people drifted to, from one place to another, there is bound to be a problem. Let us curtail that drift. Most especially in Taraba State. It's the only state in the Northeast that has managed to survive without the Boko Haram putting roots here. The General Officer Commanding 82 Division in Ugu advises that the problem be faced squarely. The problem swept under the carpet will always be there. And the carpet, when it becomes bumpy, it may fall you down. If we don't tackle it on time, it may become someone keeping a cob, a lion cob. When it becomes a full-grown one, 
is difficult to take care of. Governor Ishaku has also asked for dialogue and active collaboration among security agencies to bring an end to the clashes.